Welcome back. I want to go over installing Linux onto a Libre Renegade small board computer. This is a Raspberry Pi alternative that I found to work very well. You can find the Libre Renegade on Amazon if you just search for Libre Renegade. Renegade, if you spell it right. And you'll see right here it's $49. Then you have to add on a micro SD card. So anything over 8 gigabytes should be fine. So if we look up 8 gigabyte TF card, you'll see right here they come up and they're not very expensive, six bucks. Once you do that, you can do a search for Armbian, go to the download page, and then from there you can do a search for Renegade, and you'll find the page that you need for downloading the software for the Renegade. I had issues getting the XFCE Jammy version installed, so I downloaded the CLI version. And then from there, I was able to build the XFCE myself. But the way I found is to go to CLI, direct download, and then make sure you have the Raspberry Pi Imager software installed. Go to Choose OS, go down to Use Custom, choose the image file that you've downloaded. Choose your storage, which in my case is going to be an 8 gigabyte SDHC card, and hit write. I'm going to reflash this anyway because I wanted to do a scratch install. But after this, I'm going to install Octoprint, and I'm going to install the Octo add on, which will allow me to have a graphic user interface suited for touchscreen applications. This will allow you to use the Libre Renegade on a 5-inch or 7-inch HDMI display, again, from Amazon. If you look up 7-inch HDMI touchscreen, you'll see right here you can get one for about 40 bucks. You can get fancier ones that have little cases and what have you, but there's also a multitude of cases available on Thingiverse, printables. You can go crazy and get a 10-inch screen. 7-inch seems to be a pretty decent size for the application. The CLI version of Armbian is a very small install, so it doesn't take very long to get it written to the card. It'll write it, then it'll verify it, and then we should be ready to go. So now I've got the card written. I can now put this into the Renegade, and I can power it up, and then I can SSH into it using PuTTY. So I'll be honest with you, there's a couple of ways that you can get into the Renegade after you install the TF card and power it up. The easiest way that I've found is to plug in the Wi-Fi adapter that you're going to be using, one that works. The Comfast card that I was using was the WU810N. I purchased an 815, and the 815 does not work with Linux. So you have to find something that has the Realtek 8188EUS chipset, and they seem to be pretty plug and play, so I have to get another one of those. But on this go around, I just plugged in the Renegade with the Comfast plugged in, and it just asked me if I wanted to connect via Wi-Fi to the network, which allows me now to SSH into it. You can uh, also plug in an Ethernet cable, but again, the, the way that I found for me the easiest thing to do is just to power it up with a monitor plugged into the HDMI port, go through the initial setup, and then once you get the command line interface going from there, then you can start to SSH into it, or you can just continue on via the Pi with a keyboard and monitor plugged in. In this case, I should be able to go to PuTTY and SSH into it because I know the I know the DHCP address all too well at this point. I'll log in from here, and now I can start loading up all of the stuff that I need for Octoprint. The easiest way that I've found to install Octoprint is to actually install Clipper. Strangely enough, because I'm going to be doing this on a Marlin system, but if you go to the KIAUH. Kayo, Kayo, Kayo. I call it Kalua. GitHub page. 
And if you follow these instructions to get clone into it and install the script, so I'll just copy this. I don't have to do a CD because I'm already on the main directory. Right click. Now I've been able to clone into it. Now I can just type period slash ki hit tab and it'll backfill that and then ki again tab and then enter. From there I'm going to get the, the clipper installation and update helper screen. You can't do an octoprint install without first installing clipper. If I try to do that, if I go to option number one and then option number six, you're going to see Clipper is not installed. Please install Clipper first. So I'll just do a Clipper install with Python version 2.7, one instance, and then hit yes. So I went a little bit ahead and I went through the Clipper installation and then I chose option number six to install Octoprint. Octoprint is now installed. Sometimes you get this error message right here the sudoers Octoprint shutdown is owned by GID 1000 should be zero. Okay, so quick sidebar to fix that error message with the GID 1000. What you want to do is you want to just type in sudo C H O W N. Type in the word root with a colon and then put root next to it. And then from there, put slash etc slash sudoers dot a. And then octo print dash shutdown. And what that will do is it'll reassign the ownership of that file that keeps giving the alarm to the root owner, which is GID0. There are also various other octo print installations that can be run via scripts. I haven't run those personally. So take my video with a grain of salt. This is just the way that I've been doing it and it just seems to work out. I, I install Clipper, I install Octoprint, I remove Clipper, and Octoprint stays and it just works. So again, it's probably not the best way to do it, but this is the way that I've found that seems to work for me. But once you're done with that, you select B for back, and now you can uninstall Clipper by going to option number three, option number one, and it's going to go through and it'll take out Clipper. Then I can do back, Q for quit, and get back to the command line. Now that we have Octoprint installed, if we just do a search for Octodash and go to the Octodash GitHub page, under installation, if we copy this bash script right here, this should be all we need to do to get Octodash installed. So we'll SSH back into the Renegade. We've copied that, right click, hit enter, put in our password. And then once we run this script, we just let it do its thing. It'll install all of the X11 stuff that's necessary. It'll put the Octodash in. And then as it goes along, it's going to prompt you with a couple of different questions. It's going to ask you where your Octoprint virtual environment is located, and it's going to ask you if you want to start Octodash when you power up your Renegade. And in this case, we'll say yes, because we want it to be our primary interface when we first power up the computer, so we don't have to worry about logging in to the desktop and then trying to run it from there or worry about uh, web UI or anything like that. So there may be one more thing that we have to do, and that's going to be to set up for auto login. And once this is done, I'll show you how to do that. When you get the prompt for the Octoprint full virtual environment path, you have to put in slash home slash your username slash octoprint slash venv. Then it'll ask you what you want to install. Typically I just go and hit the space bar on everything, just cursor down hit the space bar. And most of the time, as soon as I hit enter, it says that there's a bunch of errors. But from there you can just keep hitting yes. 
and it'll go through and it'll install everything that it can install. I haven't figured out what this thing is trying to do that it comes up with this no such file or directory. But we'll just let the package installer go through and then it'll ask you if you want to reboot and you just select yes and hopefully when everything comes back up it will just load directly into Octodash. I really hate having to do things twice but for some reason OBS Studio decided that it only wanted to record audio and tell the rest of my video to kiss off. So to end out the procedure on getting Octodash installed. In order to get the auto login to work for the Octodash to load up by itself, what I had to do was I had to go in and disable the password for the user that Octodash was installed on. So in my case, that was the fill account. And to do that, I went into Putty and you just type in P-A-S-S-W-D space dash D and then space, and then the username that you want to delete the password for. If you're on that current user, right now I'm logged in as root, but if you're on that current user, just put in sudo, pass wd, dash d, and then the user, and it'll delete the password. Also, what you have to do is you have to set up auto login. So to do the auto login, what you want to do is you just want to go to sudo, nano and then slash etc slash systemd slash system slash I believe it's G E T T Y Yeah Getty dot target dot wants slash getty at T T Y one dot service. Hit enter, scroll to where you can see this exec start equals, and next to this a getty, put a space, dash, dash, auto login, and then the name that you want to auto login with. Every example I've seen had this exec start equals over top of it to clear out any pre existing. I just threw that in there for good measure. When you're done, hit control O to save it and then hit enter it'll ask you if you want to overwrite it and just say yes so the next time you restart your renegade you don't have to log in through the command line because that was an issue that i was running into i was just getting the armbian splash screen coming up it would time out and it would prompt me to log in or if i had a keyboard plugged in i could hit the escape key and just wait for the login to happen I got it to where it would autofill the name, and then I couldn't get it to, to autofill the password. So I just deleted the password, and now it loads up no problem with the auto login without a password. And here we have it. So the Renegade looks a lot like an MKS Pi, with the exception of the 40 pin GPIO section, like a Raspberry Pi would have. It's got the exact same amount of USB ports, it's got the same ethernet port and it takes the same come fast usb wi-fi dongle and as i mentioned before the 810 works but the 815 does not on both of these actually so here's the mks pi their gpio section is actually pinned for the accelerometer and they use the 24 volt input here which Essentially, you could use the power off of the motherboard. I'm just not doing that. I'm using an actual external adapter. Here, I'm just powering this off of a phone charger. So it's all plugged in. It's all ready to go. And over here, I've got Octodash running. I'll give you the, I'll give you the general. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, I'm going to get a smaller screen for this, but I needed to prove this out, and I needed this to auto-boot before I was spending any more money on stuff. So on Octodash, I can go to Control. Now I've got my controls here. I can move my Z up. And you can see that it moves. I can move X left and right.
I can home it out. All from this touch screen and not even have to use the original D wind screen that came with the Elegoo. It's just nice to have options at this point. Because the way that I was running this initially, I was just using the MKS Pi with the Octoprint server running. And that, I mean, that worked great. It, it's fantastic. And I'm, I'm, I'm kind of at a crossroads of which one I actually want to use. I can't get Octodash to run on the MKS Pi. But I think I've got a couple of ideas that I'm going to poke and prod at now that I've got this working. So that's pretty much it. I, I'm sure I missed a couple of things. I didn't cover everything totally in depth the way I wanted to. But if you need help with this, just reach out and let me know if you're stuck somewhere and I'll give you a hand with, with it any way I can. But based on the metrics that I've been seeing, I'm noticing that 78.8-ish percent of you are not subscribed to the channel. So if you haven't done so yet and you enjoy the content, please, 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 please subscribe to the channel, like the video. It helps push the stuff up in the search engine so it helps other people with their issues and, and it helps the channel ultimately because it gives me incentive to continue doing what I'm doing on these machines, the 3D printers, the CNC machines, the Linux stuff. Huge, huge, huge shout out to Rotary SMP. I'll probably say this in a Linux video as well because I don't think he's going to be watching 3D printer stuff, but huge thank you to Rotary SMP for the shout out for my classic ladder tutorial videos. Uh, I can't thank you enough for your kind words and the, uh, the subsequent bump in <laughs> subscribers that I received the day of. I thought that was fantastic. So thanks a lot for that. Uh, thank you, everybody, for your continued support. Thank you for your appreciation. Thank you for liking the channel. Thank you for liking. <laughs> thank you for everything. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, we'll see you soon.